Hello everyone, welcome back to Smith's Garage. In this video, I'm gonna go over how I did all the metal work on this car. And this is gonna be a two-parter because this one's gonna be about the metal work and I'll follow up with another one on how I did the finishing touches, the body filler, made it look all pretty and schnazzy. And yeah. So the big topic of this video is how I completely screwed it up actually. Um, and no, that is not clickbait. Uh, I, well, I didn't completely screw it up. I almost screwed it up. So I'm telling you learn from my mistakes because there's only one part of this video that I can tell you you 100% need to do. Otherwise the rest of it is just how I did it and maybe you could follow suit. But without further ado, the number one issue with Volkswagens when you're going to look at one to buy it, when you're working on it, are the heater channels. Now, the heater channels are a channel that run from the back to the front of a Volkswagen Beetle. Um, they transfer the hot air from the engine and bring it along the side, disperse it into the cab and defrost your windshield, which works sometimes, not really that often. But it is not only just the structure of the car, but also the biggest weakness of the car. That is where you will find all your major rust and integrity issues. They always are rusty and you pretty much every time you pick one up, you just need to look there and assume you need to replace it. Um, and as you can assume, mine, very rusty, had to replace them. And this is the big trick that I almost didn't do. I was procrastinating on getting cutting mine out because I had the replacement ones but I was not looking forward to doing it. And I was like, okay, fine, I'll do it. So then I started to grab the grinder and I was about to just straight up cut them out. Um, my dad, thank God, was like, you should build a temporary cage inside of the car so that when you cut out the structure of it, it doesn't twist weird and make it so nothing lines up properly ever again. And thank God he said that because I would have really screwed myself over. So I took some conduit, electrical conduit, braced it from side to side, all the important parts, welded it together. It was pretty ugly, but it got the job done. It's kind of like a makeshift roll cage. Um, and once that was in there, then we were able to cut out the heater channels and make this huge giant mess in the garage. Um, and one big thing about heater channels is uh, they are the area that bolts down to your frame, not down to your frame, it bolts up through your chassis to the body, to the heater channels. And the reason why that's important is when you're replacing them, you need to make sure that your bolt holes are gonna line up properly. Uh, and chances are they're not gonna line up fully properly. Mine didn't. Uh, they lined up, they're really close actually, most of them did. But the way I fixed that was I took a die grinder and I went up underneath and I reamed out the hole in the direction that it needed to go just by like an eighth of an inch. And that is what opened it up so my bolt could go through there. And I was using big washers anyways. So they all ended up fitting and holding the body down just right. But the next big issue I ran into was right off the heater channel, there is, let me zoom in here sure you can see where I'm going with this. Your hinge piece, it bolts right down to your heater channel. It is, once your heater channel, heater channel rusts out, it'll rust up to that. Now, the other side was fine. It was only that one that I had to do. Now, I was super nervous that once I cut this out and put my new one in, I was gonna close, go to close my door and it was just gonna hit the side of the car because the alignment was like fully out. So again, I had my dad to help me a lot on this one. And we tacked it in place, put the door on, made sure it fit properly, took it out, made sure it was all, I think we did it a couple times because we were really worried. And then we fully welded it in place. Um, and that, that piece fully decides whether your door fits or not, pretty much. And even then, I, after putting that much heat onto it um, and bolting the body down, something changed and the door it doesn't fit perfectly, it's pretty close. Um, I'll show you what I mean in a moment. 
but to move on from there, the other few spots I had to do. If you have a piece of metal and you're replacing it, check for spot welds. And if there are, if it was spot welded in, you can take a drill and drill out the spot welds. You can drill the same holes and weld through the holes and make, they kind of look like original factory spot welds. But the last part about the inside of the car is if you move to the back, in the back here, I'm trying to get to the luggage rack to be more specific. Actually, you won't even be able to see it. Yeah. The funny thing is that I'm a 6'2 guy and I pick the smallest car to work on. Which, by the way, I actually do fit pretty well by the steering wheel. Seat fully back is just the right amount of room for me. So, just to prove that big guys can still work on small cars. But anyways, while I'm in here, the luggage rack in the back, it was rusty on the bottom. I ended up replacing it. And same story as with the heater channels, there's bolt holes along the top and you have to really make sure that they line up. Um, those ones aren't too bad. I don't think I even, I, I only have seat belts in the front. I don't legally need seat belts in this car. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, so, somebody sitting up there, I would not fit here. Only one passenger in the back and they got to sit sideways because that's safe. <laughs> oh man, graceful. But that brings me to the front of the car. Front of the car. <laughs> um, so for the outside, for the outside body repair that I had, I had to replace this entire apron. Man, I'm scared of that hood closing. Um, this entire front apron. And the reason why was because my bumper mounts were rotted right out and it actually rotted through the walls as well. So easiest option was new front apron. I got my front and back apron from uh, Wolfsburg West. I think it was out in England somewhere. Took me forever to get these parts, but I kind of went the more expensive route with these two pieces because I felt that they were important visually to get a high quality, thick metal made piece. Usually I like making my metal pieces myself, but these ones were just a bit too intricate. But the issue with when you're putting one of these in is when your hood closes, uh, if this is too far down, it won't latch. If it's too far up, your alignment is gonna be bad because once it closes, you'll have a gap somewhere along the edge. Um, so you really wanna watch that it's gonna line up properly. Uh, another thing about this, as I said about the spot welds, is it hooks down and back up and it welds on right here. And there's spot welds you can weld through to make your life a little easier. The fender bolting through and on is actually a pretty, that part's not too bad. I never had an issue with that. Um, also, I forgot to mention that um, none of these fenders even came with the car. Or, well, obviously they came with the car, but uh, these aren't the original fenders. Uh, the original fenders were super mangled and I ended up getting this car with this really nice set of black fenders. and. They mat seemed to be the same. The only thing that wasn't the same is they uh, didn't have the turn signal mounts on top because they were for a car that had the turn signal in a different location. I'm not 100% what sure what year that was. Not like a genius on the Volkswagen years. So don't kill me. I drilled the holes in to mount the turn signals, but that's because that's original to this year of car. I like keeping things to the same year. I had an opportunity to buy an oval window rear clip if I wanted to, but I'm not a fan of changing up the year. Uh, on the other hand though, if I found an opportunity to make this into a rag top, I might have done that. That would have been cool. It gets so hot in there during the summer. But anyways, along with the fenders, this hood is also not original to the car. I don't know if you can see it, the original hood's still up there. I threw away all the old parts of this car, but I wanted to keep the original hood as a memorial to what it looked like before I fixed on it. It's a good reminder. The reason why I didn't use it is because it was cracked in a couple spots on the side. And when it was up, um, it would sag way lower than the hood was meant to on the other side. Because there's not a lot of supports on this hood when it's open. 
And it was also on top of that, it was like dented all the way down. I know these are all fixable things, but I just ended up finding another hood for a decent price. So I just jumped on the opportunity. But yeah, uh, same, same style and everything worked out. But let's move on over to the back. So same as the front apron, I replaced the rear apron as well. Now this one, I actually had two aprons for, uh, I had bought one from California Imports and one from Wolfsburg West. I bought the California Imports one first because this was before I'd even bought the front apron. Their apron piece didn't have these uh, grooves in it. And I'm not usually too paranoid about making things look original, but it just didn't look right to me. So I never ended up using it and I ended up getting a different one I'm pretty sure it was a Wolfsburg West one that had the nice grooves in it. That is why I bought the front apron from the same place was because I just wanted to get a high quality part that I trusted. Um, this one was a little harder to do. The seam where I welded it on is right there. And on the back, like underneath, it's not too bad because it's all hidden, so I wasn't too worried. But right there was like the hardest piece. And again, same as how the front one was, you have to watch your angles because this one, when I did it, it actually is up a little bit too high because when I close this, you can see there's a bit of a gap right here. And because there's a gap there, um, it just doesn't look as nice, but it still fits nicely. Um, it actually kind of worked out in the better, uh, for, for the better for me because um, I don't think you can see it. Can you see it? No, you can't see it. Uh, let me move the camera. But my carburetors, uh, if you go right in here, yeah, there you go. This carburetor rubs right there. I know it looks pretty ugly and horrible and I should have fixed it by now. The issue was is that uh, I didn't, I closed the hood, engine had clearance, didn't think about it and I ran it for a while. The mark was already put there, so I've just been kind of procrastinating on it. But what a lot of people do is a lot of people run with their hinges up higher, so when their hood's closed, there's a gap up here to scoop more air in. And I happen to be really proud that I could fit this engine in there without doing that. But on the downside, it's rubbing. But what I'm gonna thinking about doing is shaving just this side of the carburetor down a little bit or maybe even getting a shorter stack on there i also kind of want to get a raised latch on the bottom because this latch is not my favorite it's a little hard the seals are really hard to compress um but yeah that's just me being nitpicky on little things otherwise it looks good runs good doesn't break doesn't work that lock doesn't work which is kind of annoying um uh, one other thing that was way harder than you probably would think was those tail lights. Those tail lights, both my back fenders are, one was a, a one I had to buy and the other one was the same as the black set that came with the car. The black set only had three, which was annoying, but the holes in here for these were in the wrong spot. I could tell from either side that they were mismatched. So we had to fill them and then re-drill them. But with the shape and roundness of the back of the car, finding where they went, like tilted or up and down, out, back, was way harder than you would ever imagine trying to figure out exactly. When you're looking at a blank slate for where those have to go, there's no specific spot to measure off of. It's weird. I'm pretty sure I got them in the best spot that I can. I wanted to make sure that these lenses were flat back and at the right height. I tried to use as many measurements and pictures as I could find, but reality was it was really difficult. That is pretty much all when it comes to the body work on this car. Um, I will make another video talking about the body filler part, but I don't want to make my videos super long. Um, one unique thing that happens if you end up doing things the way I did and like getting brand new seals, everything, 
your doors are actually going to be quite hard to close. I have to keep mine cracked when I'm when it's inside because otherwise I can't close it. There's no air that comes out. They have to quite firmly latch it, but yeah. Uh, I by no means am saying this is the right way to do your rust repair. I don't believe that there is a right way of doing it, if I'm being honest. I'm just telling you what I did because I've had a couple questions. Um, and if you have any more questions, feel free, send them away. I'll try to address it in a video. Um, I will be, I want to make a video about how I picked my wheels and tire offset because I've had a few questions about that. So I'll be doing that soon. The next video I'll make will be about the uh, body filler because I did happen to use, I know some of you are probably like, oh, don't use body filler. That's, you know, avoid it. I know obviously to avoid it. I did the metal work as best as I can to get the perfect body shapes. But the reality is, is that if you don't use just like a skim coat of body filler just to fix that last little bit, you're not gonna have a very nice finish. Um, maybe some guy will know how to do it and make it look amazing, but I don't have any body filler on this car that's over like a 30 second thick. It's a pretty thin coat that's on this, a couple spots in this car. So if you're new, check out all the other videos in my playlist. That'd be great. And I plan on making a bunch more and hopefully making up for missing two weekends of posting. So thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.